The respiratory tract is made up of the nose, the nasal cavities, the paranasal sinuses, the nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngopharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, further subdivisions of the bronchi and the lungs. So that is the extent of the respiratory tract. It is conventional to describe the respiratory tract in terms of an upper respiratory tract and a lower respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract includes the nose, paranasal sinuses, nasal cavities, nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngopharynx and the larynx. Beyond the larynx is the lower respiratory tract, made up of the tracheobronchial tree and the lungs. So let's consider the tracheobronchial tree. The trachea commences at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage as the direct continuation of the larynx. The cricoid is part of the laryngeal skeletal framework and precisely at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage the larynx changes its name to the trachea. And that level, the lower border of the cricoid cartilage, corresponds to the level of the sixth cervical vertebral body in an individual whose neck is neither exaggeratedly extended nor exaggeratedly flexed. Incidentally, it is at that level, the lower border of the cricoid cartilage, that behind the pharynx becomes the esophagus. So the pharyngoesophageal junction is at the same level as the junction between the larynx and the trachea. Let's now consider the tracheobronchial tree in detail. From its commencement, the trachea runs down more or less in the midline, in front of the cervical vertebrae, and enters the superior mediastinum through the thoracic inlet. It runs down the superior mediastinum, more or less in the midline, and crosses the superior mediastinum to enter the inferior mediastinum. And a short distance into the inferior mediastinum, the trachea ends by dividing into two bronchi, right and left bronchi, one for each lung. The trachea is a palpable, fairly rigid structure. And what accounts for the rigidity of the trachea and the fact that it's palpable is that the wall of the trachea is reinforced by rings of hyaline cartilage. 15, 18, 20, variable number of cartilaginous rings. However, these rings are not true rings. They don't encircle the trachea completely. They don't meet in the posterior midline and that deficiency is bridged by a sheet of fibrous tissue and muscle called the trachealis muscle. The trachea runs into the superior mediastinum, crosses the superior mediastinum into the inferior mediastinum and breaks up into the right and left bronchi. The very same cartilaginous rings that reinforce the tracheal wall continue to reinforce the bronchi and a good deal more of the bronchial tree. So let's see what happens to the right and left bronchi. Each is called a primary bronchus because it is the structure that enters the corresponding lung. Now each main bronchus or primary bronchus will break up into the next generation of bronchi. These bronchi of this generation are called the loba or secondary bronchi. And the number of loba or secondary bronchi on each side would depend on the number of lobes in that lung. Now it so happens that the right lung typically has three lobes. So you would expect the right main bronchus to break up into three loba bronchi. And so it does, it does not disappoint. The left main bronchus on the other hand breaks up into just two loba bronchi because the left lung has just two lobes. Now each loba bronchus within its lobe breaks up into the next generation of bronchi. And these bronchi are called tertiary or segmental bronchi. And the number of segmental or tertiary bronchi within each lobe of the lung 
is a fairly constant number. For example, on the right side, there are three lobes, an upper lobe, a middle lobe and a lower lobe. The upper lobe has three segmental bronchi. The middle lobe has two segmental bronchi and the lower lobe has five segmental bronchi, making a total of ten segmental bronchi in the right lung. On the left side, again, typically, there are five segmental bronchi in the upper lobe and five segmental bronchi in the lower lobe, making a total of ten. Why are these segmental bronchi important? Now, each segmental bronchus supplies a specific segment of lung within its lobe. And there's something else rather interesting about the tracheobronchial tree. The tracheobronchial tree develops in concert with the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arterial tree. Let me prove it to you. The trachea bifurcates into the right and left main bronchi and the pulmonary trunk which emerges from the fibrous pericardium breaks up into the right and left pulmonary arteries. The right main bronchus breaks up into three lobar bronchi and the right pulmonary artery breaks up into three lobar branches and so on and so forth. So each segmental bronchus is accompanied by a segmental branch of the pulmonary artery and together they supply a specific segment of lung within a lobe. And this unit is called a bronchopulmonary segment. So there are as many bronchopulmonary segments within each lung as there are segmental bronchi. Stands to reason. We didn't know about this until the 1940s or 50s. And a great thoracic surgeon in London was one of the persons responsible for discovering this bit of anatomy. And overnight it changed the practice of pulmonary surgery. No longer was it necessary to remove the entire lobe just because a small part of the lung was infected. You could get away with removing just a bronchopulmonary segment. If you were to look at a cast of a human tracheobronchial tree, you would see that the right main bronchus is a wider structure than the left main bronchus. And that shouldn't surprise you, because usually the right lung is a larger structure than the left lung. So you would expect its bronchus to be a wider tube. The other striking thing is that the right main bronchus is more in line with the trachea than the left main bronchus. The left main bronchus comes off at an angle. If you were to advance a flexible telescope down the larynx and into the trachea, incidentally this instrument is called a flexible fiber optic bronchoscope, before long you would see the tracheal bifurcation from within. And in the floor of the tracheal bifurcation is a ridge, an anteroposterior ridge, and this ridge is called the carina. And when you look at the carina, you see that it's not in the centre of the tracheal bifurcation, it's somewhat skewed to the left side. Consequently, the mouth of the right main bronchus appears and is wider than the mouth of the left main bronchus. So it's for these three reasons, the fact that the right main bronchus has a wider mouth, is more in line with the trachea and is generally a wider structure. So it is for these three reasons that an accidentally aspirated solid object, shall we say a peanut or a bit of carrot, if it goes past the windpipe into the trachea, is more likely to lodge on the right side than on the left side, for purely anatomical reasons.